Hello, hope everyone's doing well. Um, I recently acquired uh, three, well, actually a ton of old Dragon magazines, but I've got three here that I thought people might be interested in just kind of looking at. Before we get into the video today, I just wanted to say thank you to all the new subscribers and people who have joined recently. It really does help the channel out. It just helps a lot with visibility and just kind of the overall reach, I suppose, of uh, this content. So thank you. Um, this was from 1984. Um, so just in terms of the TSR history, um, this is kind of around the era of um, Frank Mintz's Beck me. Um, I think it's a little bit after uh, Fiend Folio came out and um, Monster Manual 2 is kind of around this time as well. But the supplements like Unearthed Arcana and Oriental Adventures hadn't been out. So we're right in the middle of that kind of first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so this one here uh, has a bunch of well, it has an ad from Raoul Puffer, um, and then uh, Kim Mohan, who was the um, the editor at the time, has a bit of an intro blurb. Um, and yeah, look, let's see what else we've got in here. It's really interesting just kind of looking back at some of these magazines just to sort of see what was going on at the time. So we've got the forum where I guess people can just write in what it says there, opinions and observations. I've got an ad for the Axis and Allies board game um, by Milton Bradley, along with some of the other um, games. And then we've got a NPC class called the Encantrix. Encant Encantatrix, okay, by Ed Greenwood, um, which is a spell shielding, spell stealing NPC class. Uh, so as is his want, it's very long. I, I think you could kind of piece together an interesting player character with this because there's a lot There's a lot going on. Um, I'm not sure how balanced it would be against first edition if you're wanting to play this as a player character because um, it has a lot of abilities. Um, so all of... The, and it's interesting too the way that first edition... And, you know, I'm not, I'm not having a go at Ed Greenwood for this, but you know, this is Gary Gygax as well, but everyone just sort of wrote class descriptions like this and it was just so dense. Um, you know, you have the spells that it can use. It can use, right off the bat, it can use two spells at first level, which is better than a magic user um, and has some has some okay stuff as first level spells as well. So I think this would be a pretty pretty potent class if you made that into a character like a character class if you weren't using it as an NPC. Sp spends, spends quite a few pages with the spell lists and just writing out what all of those spells do which is good. It's quite comprehensive you know I'll give them I'll give them that. Um, quite an interesting idea too. Um, could see myself potentially using something like that in a game. Like I wouldn't use it as written but uh, I would use the idea. A chill ad Hey, City Games, Lords of Creation. Was that was that Tom Tom Mulvey? Did he did he do that? I can't remember. Um, so, and then we also have what was a regular feature at the time from the Sorcerer's Scroll. Um, so this that was sort of Gary Gygax's space where he would write just little kind of rules updates, I suppose, and what he was getting up to. Uh, in this case, he outlines. All of the monsters that can be charmed. Oh no, is it held? Oh no, your charmable list of charmable humanoids. Yeah. Um, and as you sort of saw, he, he outlines the fact that both Monster Manual, Monster Manual 2, and Fiend Folio was out at the time. There's some Gen Con stuff, um, six species of bats from Alminster's latest lecture. Uh, not really that into that. Who cares? Um, some more Raul Partha minis. This was kind of interesting. This is um, Len Lakofka's, um, uh, an article by Len Lakofka, and he's talking about the Seul Pantheon. Does anyone know anything about that? Um, I haven't Googled it or anything, but I don't know anything about that. But he, he outlines kind of three, three <clears throat> godlike figures from that Pantheon, I suppose, which is kind of cool. 
again, just inspirational for a game, maybe. Not necessarily use as written, but maybe inspire some sort of flavor for a game. I don't know anything about Thieves Guild um, by Game Lords. And continuing with Len Lakofka's article, we've got some Dwight White Dwarf ads. Um, and again, Len stuff, we can see that the companion rules were, were out at the time. So they had just been, I guess they've been put out fairly recently. And uh, playing a political game in AD&D. So I guess if people are interested, this is quite a high level article, but, you know, sort of encouraging people to maybe look at um, AD&D or any game for that matter as a political game. Kind of an, I guess an interesting idea that, I suppose the high, high level is probably good with that, unless you unless you've got some really specific ideas that could help people with something like that. Um, Armory paints ad, lots of ads actually. So this is this is quite cool. It's a um, plain facts on Gladsheim, which is so it's like a Norse mythology type article, Scandinavian myths, myths and um, you know just outlines a bunch of different planes in that kind of broad brush stroke. You got the uh, the old tree um, with the different layers of um, planner activity going on. Some more information about that. Some more information about that, and then related to that, we get this adventure um, for high level characters, which sort of fits within that general. Um, again, by the same author that fits within that. Um, the preceding information about the, those Norse-based planes. So that's cool. Um, I don't know where the dungeon was out at this stage. I can't quite remember, but um, it's yeah, it's cool to see a, a like a, an adventure in Dragon Magazine. Some decent maps, some decent illustrations for you know a inclusion in a magazine in the approximately mid '80s. Quite quite decent. Um, some more maps, some more information, um, it's quite a cool picture, Elmore, Larry Elmore, a bit of advertising for Dragonlance, uh, I guess it's a review of Chill, so I don't know anything about Chill, I've never played it, never owned anything. Um, big double page TSR ad with all the, I guess, all the products that they had out at the time. Quite interesting to see. And then this is this was their sci-fi section area. So they often had Gamma World, Star Frontiers, Champions, stuff like that. Not as interested in this really. Gamma World maybe. I'm not really interested in the superheroes y type of stuff. I never got into Star Frontier as, as well, so I don't really know much about that. Um, Gamma World, I always thought was pretty cool. But yeah, I'd be interested to know like if this was your era of of gaming. Um, and then you've got um, Wormy, which was David Trampier's um, comic that he would include in, in Dragon. And then we've got Snarf Quest, which was Almore's, Larry Almore's. Quite a different style from what we're used to with Larry Almore, but you can still see that it's his work. So yeah, that's, that's, oh, and it's, we've got a Middle Earth role-playing ad on the back. So yeah, that's Dragon 90. Dragon 91. Um, this one's an interesting one. And that a lot of it is um, still similar. Ralph Arthur ad. A lot of it is by Ed Greenwood. So he was writing a lot for Dragon um, at at this point in time, and in some ways almost um, fleshing out Forgotten Realms in quite a real time way through Dragon. I'd be interested to hear what other people think that were kind of there at the time, but to me, that's what it seems like. You know, a lot of these articles are almost him kind of throwing information out and seeing what sticks for the development of that Forgotten Realms box set, which, did that come out in 87? Was that when that one came out? 
Um, so this is interesting. Gary Gygax is writing about how he basically emitted a major demon from uh, Monster Manual 2. Um, and he says that, you know, him and Frank Mincer, um looked into it and they, they just couldn't find how it got left out. And then they say, um, it seems to me that every time I open the book, I find something else which um, was omitted. And that, you know, hey, if you find any portions for, or, or of descriptions missing, let me know. And he's also looking for errors and omissions which originated from his own carelessness. Isn't that fascinating? Like, can you imagine, can you imagine if Wizards of the Coast uh, or Games Workshop or some of those ty these types of companies, um, imagine if they did that. Uh, to me, it's quite refreshing. It's like, hey, you know, we're, we're kind of making this stuff up and mistakes slip in and, yeah, it's it's missing. Um, help us help us with this. Whereas I think a lot of a lot of companies are really like quite I was thinking about this recently, just really cautious um, to admit wrongdoing. Whereas I think in this case it's quite charming. It still feels very connected to the audience that it's trying to to reach. Hey, we stuffed up, we left off this demon. What a faux pas. Can't believe that happened. Help us if anything else is missing. Kind of cool. So this is a really boring article. This is about um, realistic vital statistics, a new system for figuring heights and weights. I don't know. I mean, not really my cup of tea. Like, just make up something. Make up how tall or how heavy someone is. Doesn't really matter. You don't need to, don't necessarily need to randomly assign that, or you don't need to, do you really need a guide? Like, three pages, four pages of guides? I don't know. That's just me. Some people probably love it. So here we've got um, our first Ed Greenwood article, The Ecology of the Lucrotta. Quite an interesting monster, so it can essentially mimic human voice, which is kind of scary. And then it lures uh, its prey, and um, presumably devours them. So it's kind of an interesting article, and uh, I'm not sure what what supplement is that out of does anyone know offhand what supplement that that's out of is that monster manual 2 fiend folio i don't know so they did a lot of these kind of ecologies ecologies of articles where they would flesh out a bit more backstory or, or information about particular monsters and then the next article we get is the nine hells revisited more facts about devildom devil dom by ed greenwood So quite a sinister drawing there to, to kick things off. Quite evocative. Reminds me of the player's handbook. One with a paladin in hell. So yeah, very general kind of um, article about different demons, devils, so forth. Um, stigia. Yeah, different planner stuff, I guess. Um, and again, just quite superb drawings. I really like, I really like that. And I really like that as well. So it goes into the nature of the, of devils traveling the sticks. And another companion advert this armory paint one's good because i mean i think if you're buying this at the time and they just had a list of colors you'd be like well what what do these colors look like so having this palette must have been quite useful with all that mail order stuff now you just walk into a store and, and see it or you could look at a really detailed photo online but in the 84 i think this would have been a very useful thing for people who are ordering so again, we have some more. So people, I guess, people submitting some questions about devils and Ed Greenwood answering those. This would have been a uh, a pretty good deal. So if you buy a hardback AD and D book, you save sixteen dollars. So you get T one, C one, I one, and G one to three for six dollars. I guess. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Unfortunately, we've just missed out, though, because it's it, the offer expired uh, December 31st, 85, so just a little bit just a little bit too late for that one. 
some stuff about Dragonlance. Treasure Trove. This is pretty decent. You know, it has a bunch of magic items, potions, scrolls, rings, miscellaneous magic, arrows, braces. Some pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. There's swords. Some top secret advice. Some more miniatures ads. They did a lot of miniatures ads. It'd be interesting to know how many people played with minis at this point in the game because it's quite heavily promoted in Dragon. So again, we've got the sci-fi stuff. I'm not as interested in this. I mean, yeah, it's more Marvel stuff. Wonder how what percentage of the fan base or the you know kind of TSR fandom at the time actually played some of these games that they're covering. Um, a bit of fiction. Haven't read it, so can't comment on whether it's any good or not. Um, some more reviews. Yeah, most of this back part of Dragon was often quite I don't know a bit throwaway. That, these ads are kind of interesting to look at just from like a, you know, just seeing what was happening in 1984 at the time. And some more Wormy. And some more Snarf Quest. And a Paranoia ad. And another Middle Earth role playing ad. So the last one that we're looking at, uh, issue 92. Um, has a cool cover. Looks like kind of Lord of the Rings, really, except it's not a Balrog. It's, is that a centaur? I only just noticed that. Interesting. Bit of a mix-up of ads. They seem to be changing the ads around a little bit. So, I mean, this is... I feel, <laughs> I feel like this is, this is like what the average D&D nerd was like then. You know, like... what? It, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely way nerdier, I think, like in a kind of intellectual sense than than the average person who plays the game now. I feel I feel like it, you can imagine how kind of clicky it was, like getting into this kind of domain with with some of the stuff that people would write about. Like it, it, it reminds me of the, you know, the kind of actually people that exist on the Internet now. I guess you I guess it's not exclusive to to the hobby then, but it's just I find that funny. Um an ad for Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Clerics live by the rules. So just an article by Gary Gygax on clerics. Some more ads. So this is kind of a clerics issue, isn't it? How clerics can find new followers. Um... Looks like there was a fair amount of public domain art being used. I've got a um, list of miniatures painters, painting winners. Kind of interesting, like the just the standard for the time. Like if, if someone painted that now, you wouldn't... I mean, I don't think that would be particularly impressive. This This one's pretty... I think that's kind of still holds up a bit more, but I don't know about that. It might also be the quality of the sculpt, but to me that doesn't doesn't look great, especially for winning a competition. Oh, that's a bit, a bit better. And again, not particularly amazingly painted, to be honest, but I guess just in context. I feel like, too, you know, nowadays there's such a saturation of um, tips and techniques for miniatures painting, whereas at the time you probably have to be pretty artistic to be able to figure some of the stuff out, especially if the amount of people doing it are a lot less and there's a lot less, you know, kind of... Uh, yeah, it's just less less of that happening and less people to learn from. Those wheels are really well done, and yeah, I think that's yeah, it's pretty pretty good actually. But maybe maybe not so much that one. Sorry to whoever painted that if you're still alive. That's quite cool. That's not bad. Yeah, so I mean, none of, none of it's really bad, but it's just it's just interesting, kind of how the 
how painting has evolved as a sort of a hobby over that time. So remember in that other one that we looked at, you've got the Sewell Pantheon. So this is continuing uh, Len Lakofka's write-up of that. Different gods for that. Um, so again, more Ed Greenwood. The Ecology of the Etten. So, you know, another ecology write-up. Edens worship a deity that is similar to the one the hill giants know as Grolantor. Pages from the mages. So, again, more of this lore stuff by Ed Greenwood. Um, Alminster, Forgotten Realms stuff. Just tomes from, I guess, different spellcasters. Now the Thieves Guild ad, book reviews, adventures. Oh yeah, so this is an adventure as well, actually. Uh, adventurers seek an elusive elf who holds the Sword of Justice, a D&D adventure designed by John. So pretty cool to have that included as well in this. The maps are, again, the maps are pretty, pretty decent. Like that's not, that's definitely not bad for for kind of the time. And a reasonable amount, like that would probably take, that would probably be a good few sessions, the amount of content that's included there. Again, pretty, pretty decent cartography for the time, I reckon. Tune. Well, Path and Rune Quest is quite cool. The uh, different brew leader, brew shaman, ducks, minotaur, wraith, champions of chaos, warriors of chaos. So it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, Dragonbane. And you can see that heritage with Dragonbane of where it sort of came from uh, with the ducks and everything. The multi-dimensional caper. Uh, some more fiction, and then we're back to the science fiction section. Um, what is that? Cyborgs and Gamma World. Quite like the, I quite like the Gamma World content, eh? Hey? More Marvel stuff. I've heard people talk about Marvel, or seen people talk about Marvel, and it seems like it was the Champions game was pretty cool, but I just wouldn't know. And finally. We've got some more wormy. And some more snuff quest. So yeah, although it's been 24 minutes, um, I thought I would just talk to some of these older dragon mags and kind of touch on what was happening in the hobby at the time. Um, I just wanted to do a bit of a simpler video today and see you in the next one.